What's up, HD Maggers? Jeremy Weiss here with Weiss Tech Hockey, and welcome to the You Asked For It section. I'm really excited about this section. What we're going to be doing with this, you may have noticed over the past few issues, we've had a, an Any Requests feature. It's a page where you can submit your own request for certain types of material or submit a question. And uh, what we wanted to do is make this a really interactive magazine. And obviously, for there to be interaction, there's got to be two people conversing, right? So um, your end of it is the Any Request feature, and then my end of it is going to be the uh, you asked for it feature. So you can submit your questions on the any request page and that's actually going to be on the very next page after this video. Um, so if you have a question or a request for a certain type of material or whatever, um, go ahead and submit that. You submit it straight through the magazine itself. Um, and then through the you asked for it page, I'm going to be able to answer questions that come through on the on the any request page. So it's going to be really actually really neat interactive magazine and uh, we can kind of go from there. But anyways, um, what I want to do is answer a question that came in. And this question is from John and he's out in Hamilton, Ontario. So appreciate the question, John, and I'm going to go ahead and just read the question. I'm going to uh, try to avoid saying last names and organization names just to keep the privacy a little bit. But uh, here's John's question. Great magazine, loads of ideas and hints. I'm planning on moving into the coaching ranks, Adam House, this this year. After hydration manager, he calls it, uh, I like that term, that's pretty good, um, and helper on ice of my son's teams. Question, which half ice drills would maximize growth at the Adam level? Although our rep system in his organization produces good teams and players, I want the house leagues to be able to produce high or to produce quality players who can make the jump if they want to. Any ideas would be appreciated. I'll keep watching and studying. So first of all, let me just say to John, um, John, I love the idea that you're taking house hockey seriously. Um, it's unfortunate, but many coaches think, oh, you know, it's just house. All we need to really do is show up, push a few pucks around, and you know, the kids kind of take care of themselves at this level. Um, you know, it, unfortunately that's the case in more often than not. Uh, but what's, what's really, you know, you got to remember is that even the world's best hockey players played house at some point in their life. You know, most, most of the best hockey players started at house league, whether that was when they were five, six years old, or maybe even a little bit older. But, um, you know, if you don't have that developmental mindset in house, then you're going to stunt your players growth and, and progress. Um, and you're not going to really be able to help them. The, the whole idea of house is to help the kids that want to move up to move up and to create a fun learning environment for the kids who are you know probably never going to move up but want to have fun with the sport so john i think you're first and foremost your mindset is fantastic and what i want to do in this video is show you three drills that you're going to be able to use um, that are half ice drills that i think will fit really well at uh, the adam age group so let's go ahead we're going to pull up the rink and get started with this Okay, so this first drill is one of my very favorite agility drills. It's called the circle agility drill. And this is fantastic for, for any age group, really. But I think it'll fit really well into, a, you know, half ice atom practice. So what we're going to do is um, the players will go in groups. You need the circle. You can actually, you could probably do it without the circle, but it's best. So with an atom team, you know, use the guys on, on uh, the two circles in your zone. If you want to talk to the other coach and see if he doesn't mind you using uh, the middle circle for five or ten minutes while you do this drill, then, uh, you know, that can be cool too. So you can have three stations going. But here's how the drill works. I'm going to show you the, the explanation of it, which looks a lot more complicated than it really is. And then I'm going to show you some footage of what this drill looks like in action. So player starts facing, you're always going to be facing the one direction. And on the whistle, the player skates up to the edge of the circle. He's going to stop and pivot. So basically, it's not a full stop, but we want to do a pivot. And then he or she is going to skate backwards along the edge of the circle back to about the halfway spot, right? So right when you get to where you're in line with the dot, you're going to stop. At that point, you're going to come back out. I'm going to see if I can do some nice clean lines here. It may or may not work. You're going to come back out to the hash mark, okay? Just like that. And then you're going to pivot and go backwards back to the dot. It's really you're just kind of doing a half moon here. So you're going to pivot backwards. I'm going to just overlap these, these dots or these lines. Okay, but you can remember the sequence and then it'll make sense when you see it in action. So you're gonna come back backwards to the dot. Remember, you're always facing this direction, always facing forward the whole time. At that point, you're gonna do sidestep crossovers to the player's left, stop at the edge of the circle, and then you're gonna come five step crossovers all the way back across to the other edge of the circle. Okay, and then stop again, and then five step crossovers back to the middle. 
Okay, well, did that line a little bit wrong there. We'll do it again. Okay, five step crossovers back to the middle and stop. Now at the middle, you're gonna pivot open and you're gonna come forward. Again, up to the edge of the circle, right on the hash marks here. I know my lines are overlapped. Like I said, the explanation of this looks a lot more complicated than it really is when you put it into action. Okay, at that circle, you maybe guessed this already, you're gonna pivot. And this time you're gonna skate backwards going along the other edge of the circle. You're gonna stop at about where the dot is, so about halfway around the circle, you stop. And then again, you're gonna come forward and back up around the edge of the circle, you're gonna pivot. Click the wrong mouse button there. Okay, you're gonna pivot and then come backwards all the way through to the bottom of the circle. Just like that. Okay, so it's kind of like a modified iron cross. I know there's different versions of this, but the idea is quick feet, agility, lots of pivoting, lots of forwards and backwards, stay low, quick feet, you know, throughout the whole thing. This drill's got a few variations as well. Um, what I like to do is start the players without the pucks. I wanna see how well they can do. I wanna see them in action. I wanna see them progressing through this. Um, once it looks like they're getting the hang of it, as far as the skating, uh, you know, the, the movements goes, then I put a puck on their stick and you know, make them do it with the puck. So they've gotta you know, control the puck while they're going through the drill. Um, as they start getting more comfortable with the puck, then I put a little bit more pressure on them. And the way I do it is by saying, okay, anytime you lose the puck, um, it's gonna be five push-ups. So you know, now it's not only do they have to go speed, but they have to really focus on handling that puck. If not, there's something on the line, um, you know, a little punishment on the line for you know, if, if they um, mishandle the puck or get puck, puck falls off their stick. After that, I progress it to where I actually go through the drill with them, um, putting token pressure on them. So what that does, it forces them to use puck protection as they're going through their pivots, especially as they're going through their sidestep crossovers. And so I'm putting, you know, keeping a stick on their hip, um, putting pressure on them and, you know, trying to make them so they're functioning, skating through the motions, maintaining puck control while under pressure, utilizing some of those puck protection tactics. So that is the circle agility drill. Now I'm gonna, I actually just barely filmed this drill um, on my synthetic tiles. So I'm gonna flip over to that, show you what this drill looks like in action in my basement. Um, and then you can kind of get an idea of what this drill, uh, what it should look like at full speed. <laughs> All right, I picked this next one up on Jim Vital's Vital Hockey Instagram account, and this is a really good one. The, the one thing I like actually about Half Ice Practice is it, it gets you, um, allows you to be creative on small space skill development. And I think small space skill development can actually be really, really beneficial, especially when you get, get into game situations. You're used to functioning in a con confined space, and um, you know, it makes it so stick handling and you know, different um, high pressure moves are able to be done in a more complex situation. So this one, uh, again, this is gonna look more complicated on paper than it is in real life, but I really like this one. Um, well, you can see we've got these two sticks laid out on the ice. And what we're actually gonna use these sticks for, these, these are not gonna be sticks, these are those attack triangles. You can pick those up at hockeyshot.com. Um, but basically what they are is it's, it's kind of a, uh, almost like a two feet and a stick. So it allows you to put moves on things that are, um, you know, so instead of having a coach or a player stand there, which you can do, um, but this is just almost like a, like a, a cone, but it functions a lot more than just a cone. So whatever obstacle you have that you can put here that would function the same way, um, feel free to be creative on that. Basically, here's how the drill works. Uh, you have two lines. If you have more than two uh, attack triangles, you can set up like two per side and then have each group alternating through. And as you can see, we've got two nets set up too. So the whole idea with this, what we wanna do, and one of the things that's a challenge with, um, with half ice practices is selecting drills that keep everybody moving enough. Especially the young age groups, you wanna minimize standing around. Um, so the more stations you can do on this, the, the faster it's gonna go, there's gonna be less wait time. So you can, alt you can have two set up and then just they're alternating back and forth. So that the goalie's fielding one shot from one side, one shot from the other side. And, he or she just goes back and forth as the drill's coming in. As we have it set up, we're just, we've just got the two lines, and that's fine. So here's how it goes. So you're gonna start, um, put a move on the attack triangle. Oh, I did this wrong. Let me get the best proper arrow here. Okay, put a move on the attack triangle, come out and around it. As you get to the back side of the attack triangle, you're gonna pivot. Skate backwards, again, you're always facing the net, always facing the goalie. Okay, then you're gonna come back 
And again, you're going to pop the puck through the triangle of the of the attack triangle, um, the attack triangle training aid. Pop it through, bring it back, and then you're going to come back up and around, skating forward. Again, back up, pivot, and then you skate backwards with the puck. I should use the backwards with the puck line here. Okay, one more move in and back, and then you're going to come out and around and attack the net for a shot. So again, looks looks fairly complicated, a lot of overlapping arrows on the play, but basically you're coming around, putting a quick move, quick move, boom, up and around, quick move again, and then back. Now, if that ends up too much wait time, you can eliminate one of those laps. You can come up and around, put the quick move through, and then attack the net straight from there. Um, it's up to you, but basically what you're doing is pivoting around this this uh, the attack triangle, putting moves through it as you're going through the drill, and um, pivoting quickly forward to backwards. Again, it's a great agility drill, a lot of puck control on it, and you can work in some shots in the process. So again, I've uh, recently done a video using synthetic ice and um, actually demonstrated this one in that video as well. So we're gonna clip over to that. You can see what it looks like in action and then go from there. All right, and this last one is, uh, I call it the Canada two-on-one low. And um, basically this one comes from, I came across a video of uh, Team Canada doing this out at the Sochi Olympics. So this one comes from them. Um, again, this, you know, this is a great one for pretty much any age group, uh, ranging from 10-year-olds all the way up through, um, you know, through Olympic-style teams. So this one's an easy setup. This is a great kind of a small game type situation um, where you've got, you've got a, a, a group of forwards um, you know, across the top of the circles, a group of fours across the top of this circles, uh, and then the rest of your defensemen in the middle. And then we've got a coach out here with pucks, and basically his job is going to be to dump the puck in. So here's how the drill looks. Basically, coach throws a puck into the corner. This one's a really simple explanation, but great drill. And uh, as soon as the puck gets dumped in, you've got two forwards going. Okay, so the first forward is going to go down and pick up the puck. And the second forward is going to play, um, you know, either go to the net or go to a support position for the first player. So basically, we've got it looking something like this. And every situation will be different. And then we've got, a, you know, whichever defenseman is, is up, he or she is going to be going in and uh, attempting to play the two on one. So basically, staying between the puck carrier and the man that's trying to get open. And so it's a very game like situation where you're playing a two on one out of the corner and uh, forces your forwards to, um, you know, to support each other, as well as um, you know, getting open, opening up for the passing lanes, quick shots on net. And then this one, the reason I like this drill is because it's pretty quick. So you can control the speed that, uh, that it goes through. So you might say you know, one shot and a rebound and then you're out. And then um, you know, as that shot comes in, the rebound comes in, then boom, coach is throwing another puck into the opposite corner. And the same thing's happening on the other side. A defenseman goes in to play the two-on-one. First two forwards up are going in to, uh, you know, to grab the puck and then try to work it back in front of the net. So you'll see a lot of quick passes out front, one-time shots, rebounds, and um, you know. And then again, it's great. You can have your your spare goalie working. Uh, so you got one goalie in net, the other goalie is out here, and you can say, you know, six shots and then switch or however many shots you want to do. And basically, it's just continuous. You're keeping it rolling um, back and forth, back and forth, and it's a great drill. So again, I'm going to clip over to uh, the clip of Team Canada running this drill, and then that will be it for this video. So hopefully, John, that helps. And uh, I just want to say before we clip over this last video, great luck. Have great luck this year. Um, keep studying the game. It sounds like you're already on the right track, and your, uh, your Adam House team is going to be very fortunate to have you as a coach. So appreciate it. Um, if you have your own questions or requests, feel free to use that request function on the next page. Just swipe over, you'll get to it, and uh, feel free to leave me a comment. Um, if you want me to reply in an email, make sure you leave your email address in there as well, and it uh, works really well. So thanks again, and uh, that's the You Asked For It section.